understudies. Understudies is inspired by Elizabeth Gray's real life experience as an understudy for Breakfast at Tiffany's on Broadway. Born into a pedigreed musical theater family, actress Astoria Bag finally gets her big break understudying the lead in Broadway's hotly anticipated uh, Twilight at Tiffany's. Between navigating the backstage dramas of a high-end Broadway production and a trauma wrought by a competitive Tony Award-winning mother, Astoria seeks to find her place as an artist in the city of a thousand stages. Uh, this Friday, April 24th at 7.30 uh, p.m., the Independent Filmmaker Project will host a free sneak preview of the first episodes at the Made in New York Media Center in Dumbo as part of their Screen Forward series. And joining me now is Astoria Bag herself, star and co-creator Elizabeth Gray. Welcome, Elizabeth. Uh, thanks so much, Adam. Nice seeing you this morning. Um, so this was taken from based on real life experience. As indeed based on real so life experience. So you've been an understudy, your due as an understudy? Yep, I've paid my dues as an understudy. I understudied um, in Breakfast at Tiffany's uh -huh. on Broadway, I guess it was March 2013. Mm -hmm. I was understudying all of the female characters in the show. Yeah. Amelia Clark, who was um, playing the lead, and then every character ranging in age from 16 to I think 80, all the women in the show. Yeah. So. It's yeah. a lot. It's a lot of pressure too, because you have to be there every well, like everybody in the cast. You have to be there every day, every day, regardless. And also, you're memorizing all the parts. Most the, all the actors that are in the cast, of course, just have their own. Yeah, I was actually playing several roles in the show every day, anyway. And then I also ah. memorized everyone else's parts and all of their blocking. Yeah, right. Yeah. The blocking too. Is there there's a difference though between uh, where you are like have one role that you have to fill in for, right? Isn't there a different t there's term, a term for that? There's a standby. Standby. Standby is a, a different standby, thing. Standby, it's a different yep. thing. Um, and also, um, so you did that for, it, was it just that, that was obviously a very high profile show because yep. it was on Broadway after all, but um, w d had you done other shows as well? I understand? had never understudied before. Okay. And it was really an education. It was so much more work <laughs> than yeah, I'd ever yeah. done as an actor before. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure. But also, at some point, you have to, uh, you re I think what this brings up as well as I know there was a documentary I saw last year uh, which followed three understudies, that at a certain point you have to just decide, you know, uh, this is either something I'm going to be doing for a long period of time or I'm going to have to not take that anymore. Right. Right? So yeah. did you, was that something you grappled with uh, while you were on Broadway? Um, I certainly did, or at least afterwards, because when you finish, a, when you finish an understudying job, uh -huh. uh, particularly a really fantastic job like, like understudying on Broadway, immediately everyone says, come and understudy for us. Yeah, right. <laughs> sure. Well, she's got a good reputation, and you know, you, do, yeah. you get yeah. to known as a, uh, a dependable understudy. Yeah. Uh, so when exactly did the uh, idea to take this experience and transform it into, uh, you know, I guess, I don't know if you immediately decided it would be a web series, but w w describe how that came about. Yeah, so it actually happened while I was in rehearsals for Breakfast at Tiffany's. Uh -huh. um, because, I, you know, one thing about understudying is that you have to sit there for mm -hmm. every, every minute of rehearsal. It's a lot of time sitting and watching rehearsal, and, and my brain uh, would, would sort of get brainstorming mm -hmm. in all of that time, right. and so I thought, this is such a, it's such a unique experience. Mm -hmm. And I'm a big, I'm a big lover of Christopher Guest and that whole world of mockumentary. Oh um, and I just thought, I, I, as an actor, had known none of this, none of what this world is to, to live in and be a part of. And I thought this would be, this would be such great material. So I actually started um, working with my co-creator, Daniel Zimbler, during rehearsals. And mm -hmm. we actually shot the first few episodes while Breakfast at Tiffany's was still running. And unfortunately, the show closed pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. So we sort of took those episodes back and decided to arc an entire season. So we have a first season, which tells a, a story. We get, well, I won't give away the ending, but um, mm -hmm. we get about a, a third of the way through the whole story mm -hmm. in the first season. And um, hopefully, we'll have a second season coming soon. Yeah, well, it's just fodder for all sorts of guests. Uh, stars yeah. and uh, I mean you have Richard Kind but he's not playing himself is he? Or, no or, Richard okay. Kind is playing um, uh, the world's leading vampire impersonator. Oh right. Okay. Meister Eckhart. <laughs> <laughs> well he can come back as himself too because yeah. uh, he's certainly done his, his um, you know 
time on the stage, you know, as well. Um, and so, uh, uh, but you mentioned that you loved the Christopher Guest documentary. Yeah. Um, but w w w how did you decide like that would uh, fit into the storytelling? I mean, because that's uh, obviously uh, there are a lot, there are quite a few people who have chosen that in the recent years. Sure. Go like this kind of uh, shooting a, you know, like uh, The Office and things like that. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think the thing about Christopher Guest is it's such loving comedy. Yeah. And as a theater practitioner, as a theater maker, it was very important to me to create, uh, create a comedy that would be made out of love. Right. And because it's um, the it's sorry to interrupt. It's it's even though it's called mockumentary, they're actually not mocking. They're no. they're they're mocking the documentary format. They're exactly. not mocking the because exactly. uh, you could go that way. You yes. can make everybody the theme. You know. Yeah. Kinda, yeah, no, I, I, we wanted to create something that was really respectful of, of what it is to, to do and make theater yeah. um, and would not in any way disparage or diminish that process. And right. so I think, I think it, it's a form which lends itself very easily to, um, to this particular content of following what essentially, you know, we don't think of the rehearsal room as being an office, but it is an office. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think following on from shows like The Office, we're really, we are creating an office comedy. It just so happens that The Office is, is the rehearsal room. Yeah, yeah. And, and again, you're going to be, uh, uh, you're going to have your uh, premiere, the first uh, bunch of episodes uh, in front of an audience on Friday night at uh, 7 o'clock, was it? 7.30. 7.30, yeah. pardon me. Mm -hmm. Get there at 7, though, so you get a yeah. seat, though. That's what I meant to say. And it's in, at the Made in New York uh, Media Center in Dumbo. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you'll be there. I'll and, be there. And Daniel and Daniel, others the from the cast yeah. and crew yeah. will cast. be there. Um, and, and then the show will actually premiere, for those who can't get into uh, Brooklyn on Friday, uh, the show premieres on May 2nd on, online. At, yeah. and, at, and what's the website? www.understudiestheshow.com. Understudiestheshow.com. And uh, I will be tuning in myself, of course, and uh, look forward to um, many, many episodes to come. So, yeah, yeah. indeed. Well, yeah, thanks. For, <laughs> did we get to everything? I think we mentioned everything. I think so. Right? Okay, yeah. very good. Uh, thanks, Elizabeth. Um, thanks.